What's up guys, I'm Har Simran here and you are watching Electric Cars Are Lit and today we will be discussing the different standards of charging, specifically electric car charging and how they differ from each other, if one is better, if one is worse, we'll be discussing all about that in this video, stay tuned, let's get started. Before we get started, I want you guys to smash that like button so that the YouTube algorithm can probably pick this video up, share the word about electric cars, and I can probably gain some subscribers. If you haven't already subscribed down below, thank you, please. So there are a few different standards for EV charging. Primarily, there are actually three main types. Those are the Chatmo plug, the CCS, and the Tesla superchargers. So these are all the fast charging plugs. So Chatmo is one that's really outdated now and it's actually gonna probably be phased out as the vehicles get older and they die off because every new car except for the lexus uh, i don't know it's like a 300e something like that they're bringing out a chatama plug on their 2020 lexus suv terrible idea because the whole world is switching to ccs that is a new standard of charging actually even tesla is adopting that standard in europe but we'll get to that later in the video. So what are the limitations of Chatmo? Well, for one, you can only charge at a max of 50 kilowatts. If you know anything about electric vehicles, most electric vehicles sold today can charge at well over that rate. Most of them can even charge well over 100 kilowatts, especially the higher end ones. The other ones are usually capped at, uh, the cheap ones are usually capped at 100. With Chatmo, the new Nissan Leaf can charge up to 100 kilowatts, the issue is I haven't seen or found a 100 kilowatt charging Chatmo plug. No Chatmo plug I've ever seen supports 100 kilowatts. They cap out at 50. Even if it says supported at 100, your leaf would only charge at maybe like 48, 49 kilowatts. So that's still less than 50. Now let's get to the CCS plug. The CCS plug is more commonly used. Tesla is adopting that standard in Europe, right? So why are why is Tesla actually adopting that standard in Europe when they have their own proprietary connector? Well, they only have it for one vehicle and that is the Model 3. Why do they have it for the Model 3? The reason is because they wanted to make it so that it's really easy and convenient to travel across country or across various countries. It's Europe. One country is like the size of Ontario. Come on. It's Europe, it's tiny as hell. Because in Europe you have a lot more variety with the charging stations uh, compared to North America, over there CCS makes total sense, whereas here you don't really need it because most of the chargers are terrible. They don't, they charge you a lot, literally charge you a lot. You Basically it's comparable to gas at that point. And they're just plain inconvenient. They're in the worst spots most of the time. Whereas Tesla Supercharger just fixes all of that. Now I am going cross between Tesla Supercharger and the CCS. It's because I'm comparing why Tesla went to the CCS port in Europe. CCS is the future. Most likely everyone in the future will have CCS. Uh, Tesla Supercharger is like the lightning connector on iPhone. We still have it, but we're not really going to use it much on most other devices. We had micro USB on phones, now we're going to USB-C. Most of the phones are already USB-C. Actually, Apple already made an iPad that uses USB-C. You can say that's like the same thing that's happening with Tesla because they already have a car in Europe that is CCS compatible. CCS is like USB-C. You can do so much with it as technology progresses. The CCS plug is actually more compact. I'll tell you what, in Europe the CCS plug looks something like this and in North America the CCS plug looks something like this. So one of them is North America, one of them is Europe. You can see that basically they're the same plug, right, more or less, but the Europe plug is slightly bigger, uh, it has a bigger circle, the upper circle, and has more ports basically now these are actually two different plugs this is how you slow charge it this is what you would plug into an AC port even the Nissan Leaf that uses Chatmo has the American style plug and the other uh, type 2 plug that small little circle that's a uh, type 2 whereas in America we call it the J1772 I have no clue why it's different even though it's named CCS it's different in Europe it's different in North America I have no clue why that is it's stupid I know 
uh, but even the Tesla superchargers in Europe, the standard, like the Model S and Model X, they use type two. So theoretically, you can just plug in to any type two connector and charge your vehicle because type two is just that common in Europe because almost every single electric car uses it. So there's no point in changing it up anyways. Whereas in North America, we have a J1772. I don't know why it's called that. It's uh, it's pretty weird. I don't, I don't like the shape, it's like tiny. And you really only use this when you're slow charging, mainly at home or if you're charging outside somewhere at, at level two, you would use that smaller circle instead of the entire Chad, uh, not Chadamo, the CCS port. Now the reason CCS is better than Chadamo is that it requires less space. If you see a uh, Nissan Leaf, it has a Chadamo plug, which has a big circle, uh, with like four port with like four ports I believe and the a J1772 or a type 2 port that requires a lot more space than just having one dedicated CCS that can work also as the AC charger now a design like an e-tron is actually really really convenient because on one side you have CCS and on the other side you have AC charging it won't, doesn't have the CCS it doesn't have the two smaller circles at the bottom because of that design you can slow charge that car at home or another level 2 charger out somewhere at either side of the car say for example the e-tron only had the CCS on one side and that's it they did not have another AC port on the other side if you park in your garage and it's not on the same side as you want it to be uh, you would find it really cumbersome to charge your vehicle whereas now because it's on both sides it's like the same as saying the MacBook Pro has a charger on both sides you can charge it from this end or you can charge it from that end and it'll work so it works to your circumstances by the way with, that is so convenient just saying you can plug in from any end it is the best thing ever and that is one thing I really like about the e-tron and other electric cars that have this feature so level 2 charging is actually limited to 240 volts but the speed varies depending on the amps you actually put into it so now let's actually talk about the third standard which is proprietary to Tesla's now in North America the Tesla charger looks so much different than the actual Tesla charger in Europe again I said it's a type 2 charger a uh, type 2 style charger in Europe and in North America, it's just their proprietary, whatever they designed, uh, that's, that's their charger. The benefit of the supercharger is that you can charge at up to 250 kilowatts. That is insane. You can do that with CCS. You can actually charge uh, to more than 250 because Ionity in Europe uses only CCS and they have a capacity of 350 kilowatts. That is impressive. That is good shit right there. Yes, we need that. Most cars can't take that much either. The fastest charging car is a Porsche Taycan and that can only charge at about 270 kilowatts. So there's really no point, but that's future proofing. Now Tesla has been developing their chargers for so long that they didn't really plan that far ahead like we're almost 10 years ahead in time from when they actually started launching their supercharger network during the time it was launched it was the best thing to happen it could charge your car at up to 120 kilowatts max obviously that was a limit created by tesla so that you don't have so much wear on your battery because at the time the technology wasn't as good as it is now because now tesla just unlocked uh, max charging for you so you can charge at any supercharger up to 150 kilowatts and upgraded superchargers to 250. Well, 250 on a Model 3, but 200 on Model S and X. Still plenty fast. Still plenty, plenty fast for all your needs because on a road trip, whenever you're driving after like two, three hours, you want at least a half an hour break and usually your car is done before the half an hour is up. I guess it just works out and makes sense. Sometimes uh, people have actually said that after taking Model 3 trips, their car finished well before they were done to get back on the road. Now Tesla also uses that same port to slow charge. So in North America, you can slow charge your Tesla at any destination charger or at home if you have the, basically it's the destination charger technically, it's the same uh, system, but it's just installed at your house. That charges your car at, I believe it's 40 miles an hour. Or you could just uh, plug it into a dry outlet and that would charge, I think, at like 25 to 30 miles an hour. So it's a bit slower, but 
for your daily needs, it's more than enough. That is really, really good. So this video was primarily talking about the standards of EV charging in Europe and North America. Hopefully you learned something and got something out of it. If you like this video, share it with others and comment down below what you actually think. I would like to know your thoughts. Um, should Chatamo be in the new Lexus? I actually want to know that from you guys because I know Toyota doesn't really want to shift towards EVs. They like their own hydrogen fueled system. They just want to pursue that. Because they're making, you know, Lexus is a subsidiary from Toyota anyways. They're making the Lexus EV the 54 kilowatt battery pack and uh, 54 kilowatt hour battery pack and with CCS, sorry, with Chatamo charging. I don't think that's a good idea. I think because I think because it's a Japanese charger, they want to keep it local and Japanese and promote that instead. But I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think the car will sell if sell that well, at least if, if it only has 50 kilowatts of max charge capable. Yeah, I want to know your thoughts. Actually, I genuinely want to know your thoughts. Comment down below. What do you think? All right. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time. Peace.